Poppy Playtime 3 has a farewell message to an amazing YouTuber, secret books from the developers, and even a hidden storyline that you never notice. But first, you gotta make sure you pay attention around the corridors. Now, these rooms are full of pictures on the wall, and while they might seem like stock images, it's actually real life photos of the devs from when they were kids. In my favorite part, some of them are even photoshopped to include toys like Bunzo. And it's not the only sign you need to look out for, because around the map you can find plenty of activity posters. But by far the most interesting one is hiding right in plain sight. This is an advertisement for Playtime Park, an amusement park that the company's building. Now this could be a teaser for the future of Poppy Playtime, then again it might just be a spin-off game or a location for the movie. But hey, that's just a theory, which brings me to one of the most beloved YouTubers on the scene. For over a decade, MatPat has been dropping theories on games like FNAF and Poppy Playtime, but recently announced his retirement from YouTube. So the Developers secretly added a farewell message to MatPat, and you'll only find it in the home sweet home level. This painting on the wall says, Boom. Clap and a half. Clap and a half. Uh. One of GT Live's most iconic catchphrases. And they even did it with a will miss you, which is so wholesome. Uh. But that's not the only insane detail in this level. Further in the building, you could walk into a large room only to find a cardboard cutout of Daddy and Mommy Longlegs. Now this is pretty cool, but look all the way in the back and you'll spot a tiny cutout of this little guy. If you didn't know, this is actually Baby Longlegs, their kid. And somehow things get even crazier. Just behind them, a book can be found on the desk. Looks like a regular prop. Until you read the cover, this is Seth Jones and the Pumpkin Lord. Now I know that sounds like the most made up book ever and well it is, but who is this Seth Jones? Turns out he's an environmental artist who worked on the game, and he's even in the special thanks section of the credits. Now with this book, he'll luckily be in the Playtime universe forever. Now someone who's been in it for years already is Boxy Boo. This guy is from Project Playtime, the multiplayer spinoff game, and fans have been waiting for his debut in the main series. They were slightly disappointed when he didn't appear in Chapter 3, but what if I told you that he secretly did? Sure, you can find Boxy Boo cutouts and murals, but once you view the Hour of Joy VHS, he could be seen in full glory taking part in the massacre. And you might already be familiar with their backstories, but one of the biggest theories is that Playtime Co. would experiment on orphans and turn them into toys. Like Kissy Missy, who you can find in a hidden bedroom just staring at a photo. This was clearly someone Kissy had a lot of connection to, either her best friend at the orphanage, or maybe it was her before the experiments. And while we're on the topic of secret storylines, you might have heard a strange radio while playing Chapter 3. <laughs> Well, this is actually reversed, and if you flip it around, it reveals an insane detail. You were supposed to be here. Why weren't you here? You missed the event. You missed the meeting. You missed the party. You have no right to be here. Not only did he confirm we were meant to be at the Hour of Joy, but it also says Poppy Playtime is set in 2005, a question that's bugged fans for years. And it turns out mob games are fans of us too, because there's one plushie you gotta track down. Head to the counselor's office and walk around the left side, and could you do the path all the way to the end until you find this? If you didn't know, this is actually a clip from CG5, a YouTuber who makes music videos about video games, including Poppy Playtime. And the best part, this one is unreleased and likely a snippet of his song for Chapter 3. Now you just gotta appreciate the details in this game, the environment is so thought out. Even something like wallpaper looks normal from a distance until you get close and see Poppy hiding in the design. And the same goes for the curtains, you'd never realize Huggy Wuggy is here unless you got super close. And it's also similar for Catnap, he's probably one of the scariest characters we've ever had in the game and that's mostly because he's constantly stalking you. It's basically all he does, just watching you from the shadows, and even the smallest crack at a door will reveal his evil stare. I gotta admit, he looks way more adorable in the VHS tapes. I mean, yeah, he's just a plush doll, but the custom design is actually a real toy that was commissioned from two artists in Spain. They even celebrated on Twitter and declared that he was not for sale, but that's not the only character they went the extra mile for. When you discover Miss Delight, she's already torn up and covered in blood with half a face. Well, it turns out that there's an unused full model for Miss Delight before she was destroyed. So if you wanted a better look at her, this is what the original version looked like. But that's not all this shows us. Miss Delight may be an innocent looking teacher, but compare this to her chapter 3 version and there's one major difference. The teeth. 
Now this isn't the same set as before, meaning she has fake teeth and she ripped them off to eat her victims. Ugh. And for those surprised when Catnap finally spoke, it left a lot of us wondering who the voice actor was behind him. Well, I sat through the entire credits and he's just not there. Literally every single character has an actor listed except him. So we don't know if this is a secret voice actor, but for now, no one knows who this guy is. But there's one Easter egg that's still confusing everyone. In chapter one, players went out of bounds and found a random lemon on a walkway. Limon? But now it's made its return. By no clipping through a window in the classroom, you can find it hidden behind a cardboard cutout. We still have no idea what this means, but I gotta say, it's a nice little throwback. And we also never found out the true home of the Smiling Critters. There were eight of these guys living in the play care, but an unreleased painting showed us their actual homes. Each of them had a themed hut, which is honestly so cute, but sadly this art was never used in the game or any of the trailers. And since you don't get any time to look around the school without taking your eyes off Miss Delight, you probably missed this neat detail. Take a look at the trash can as you enter, and you'll find the iconic S symbol that we all drew as kids. Talk about nostalgia. And the devs even hit some secrets right at the start. As soon as you jump over these pistons in the engine room, you can actually turn right and get a glimpse of Catnap as he's climbing away. And if you manage to catch this, it sets the mood for how he'll be stalking you for the rest of the game. And even though you can't find Catnap in the credits, you can see the prototype's voice actor, and it's holding an incredible secret. It's a combination of every toy actor in one, which is a great attention to detail since he's made up of all the the dead toys we've defeated. And speaking of them, at the start of the game, you can find references to many of the old characters. Go up to the vending machines and you'll see that it's run by Candy Cat. But that's not all. Every snack inside is themed after them, like Boogie Bop, Brawn, and even PJ Pug a Pillar. And if you keep looking, you can even find drinks from Mommy Longlegs. And Chapter 3 also ties together some of the teasers. Like this VHS video of Playtime Co. relocating someone to a new facility, only for them to suddenly murder everyone in the next frame. Thanks to the new Hour of Joy VHS, we now know this was Kissy Missy at the exact moment. She was being controlled by the prototype and forced into the slaughter just like the others. Another interesting part of the story is how toys can't seem to leave. Kickin' Chicken's board is a recording of him discovering the outside for the first time, but it sounds like as soon as he goes through the door, something horrible happens. And that's not the only disturbing cutout in Chapter 3. Picky Piggy also reveals a dark secret. Down chicken! Down the hat! Keep in mind, her friends were a chicken, elephant, and unicorn, so yeah, she ate them all. And guess what? She's still hungry. Hey, what do you say you and I be friends? Nope. And so is Miss Delight. Turns out Catnap locked her in a school for weeks, so her notes lying around actually reveal she's starving, and the others tried to sacrifice her. She goes insane creating her own mace and pretends to play dead so the other teachers don't see her, until she eventually turns and eats them. Finally, Catnap lets her out and is glad she killed them, so they make a deal to serve the prototype. And if somehow that didn't terrify you enough, Barb is the name of her weapon. She chases you around with this mace, but you never get close enough to realize what it's made out of. Look closely, and you'll realize it fits perfectly with her character. Yeah, Barb is made out of sharpened pencils. That's gotta hurt. And those were secrets, Easter eggs, and details in Poppy Playtime 3. It's been Sammy. Keep it here on T5G.